Well, hello, Divi Nation, and welcome to a brand new, um, welcome to a brand new live stream, Divi use case live stream. That is, sorry, I'm struggling this uh, day, but um, today we got something exciting for you. Every week we show you how to add new design and functionality to your Divi websites, and actually today we're going to be showing you in this live stream how to create section divider scroll effects in Divi. Don't forget to check the video description for more info on this use case, and let's go ahead and jump in and get started. First of all, let's go ahead and make sure y'all can hear me. Uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat if you can. Um, welcome everyone. Hopefully we can have some great learning experiences despite our circumstances. We can hang out a little bit learn something new about Divi. Um, all right, Diego, welcome. And Brian, thanks for the loud and clear. All right, looks like we're ready to get started. So just a little glimpse on what we're gonna be doing today, a little sneak peek. You can see that um, if, if you're familiar with Divi at all, you're familiar with the new uh, the, uh, section dividers that's available within a section in the section settings. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. And that is a very useful tool for creating those wonderful transitions between page content on your page. And today I'm just going to show you how you can introduce the new Divi scroll effects to these section dividers and add some cool motion effects. So here, this is a real simple one. I'm gonna go slow. You can see how the divider is slowly moving across the page as it wraps around that content there. Here's another example. And here's an overlapping one. This is a real cool effect here. And so this is kind of what we're doing. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. It's very simple to do, uh, but it will introduce you to a concept that will allow you to be really creative in your own design, making some really cool motion effects with those section dividers. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, create a new page. And it's going to make sure and deploy the Divi Builder here. And again, um, please be sure to check out the blog post that went along with this use case. It went out the, this morning. It's on our blog right here. So check that out for more information on this as we go along. Uh, let's go ahead and build from scratch on this design. And let's go ahead and give our first section. This is going to be our content. Um, so we're not going to start with our divider here. So I'm just going to start with a text module in this one column row here. And I'm going to give it a, an H2 header. And please ask any questions that you have along the way in the chat. Hopefully, we will, uh, or I will get to you as soon as possible. And if I can't answer it, hopefully someone on the chat will. And just a reminder, these videos will be available on our uh, YouTube page and our Facebook page uh, for viewing later on. So please check that out. And if you haven't subscribed yet to, to our channel, please do so, so you can get notifications every time we have a new video for you. So uh, thanks, Wayne uh, from the UK. He says, hi, hope you are all keeping safe. I as well. And um, probably hunkered down in your house like I am today. And so I'm, I'm glad to be hanging out with you guys. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. I'm going to uh, create my H2 heading here. So that's just a little piece of content. And after that, let's go ahead and add our uh, margin to our section. All right. So I'm going to exit out of here. We're going to come back to this section divider. Uh, excuse me, this uh, section, uh, sorry, text module, and we're going to go to our section. 
So I'm going to edit my section here because I need some for testing purposes. I just need some breathing room to scroll around here. So I'm just going to add some top margin to this just temporarily. We would take this out, of course, if we were doing or adding it to our own site. So I added some top margin of 80 VH, which is 80% of the viewport height. And let's go ahead and leave that there. I can actually take out the padding here. I'm going to take out the bottom padding of this section as well. All right, let me get back to my text module now. It's way down here. And let's go ahead and select it and open it, sorry. So my section content, um, my text module content, I'm going to add update my text font. Let's make it Roboto. Always like that one. And let's make it centered. Let's see this. And let's get down to the H2 tab to target my heading to font settings. And let's go ahead and make this a different color. Let's make it a light color. Kind of like that light greenish blue there. And we're going to have a dark background so it'll look nice once it's done. And for the size, let's go ahead and make it 80 pixels on desktop. And let's deploy those responsive settings. And let's make it on tablet, let's do 50. And then on phone, let's do 30. All right, easy enough. Now I'm breaking this uh, content. It's going to consist of a heading and a little snippet of text here. This is what we're going for. So here's my heading here. There's my little snippet of text, but I'm going to break it up into two sections so that I can add my divider, uh, my section dividers in the middle. Uh, you can't really tell because they don't have any height on them, but I'm going to add them in the middle. That way it kind of serves as a middle point for our content. And that way it'll kind of fit nicely behind our two blocks of text there. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new section, new regular section below the current one. And let's give it a one column row. Let's add another text module. And let's go ahead and update the style a bit. Let's do the Roboto font again. And for the text color, let's just make it like a really light gray. So let's bump it up to 16 pixel text size and make sure my line height is 1.5 M's. And let's do my text alignment to center to match the design here. And I'm going to give it a set width. So I'm just going to set the max width to 400 pixels and align my module to the center there. All right. Uh, looks like I have a little bit more spacing than I would like. Um, let's just go ahead and save this. And let's go back to my section containing this little snippet of text here. Let's go to my section settings. And I'm going to, this is very important for this design. Uh, by default, you will have uh, in Divi, your settings will have a background set for your sections. Um, even though on the back end it says that you don't have one, uh, you, if you truly want a transparent background, uh, you'll need to click on this to add a background and just bring this dial down all the way so that it is truly a transparent color. And, and that'll make sure you have no background behind that section and you'll be able to see those dividers styles behind it. And that's what we're going for. Let me make sure that this section as well has no background. So I'm gonna do that. So both content sections here um, need to have no background or a transparent background. And let's go ahead and get rid of this top padding on the second section, just to kind of, sorry, wrong one just to kind of um, 
bring those two blocks of content together a bit more. All right, so that looks good. Uh, let's get some more scrollability down there below this section. So again, I'm gonna open up that section settings and let's add some margin, um, 80 VH to the bottom. So now that I have that margin on top and bottom, I'll be able to scroll up and down for testing purposes. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating our animated section divider. And that's gonna exist in between these two blocks or these two sections here. All right, and let's do that. Let me go ahead and um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna deploy, it's my new favorite thing, uh, these layers. So I'm gonna deploy the layers feature here. So I'm gonna open up my settings and my head's in the way. So um, let me move my dial over here to the left. And if you see right over here, my settings menu, sorry, not my dial, my settings menu, uh, you'll have this new um, layers icon here. So I'm gonna click on that. And that's gonna deploy my layers view box. So I like that, I'm gonna keep it over here for now. Bring my settings menu back in its bottom placement. And now I can, you know, like you would in a, like a photo editor, like Photoshop or sketch or something, you'll have like a layers that you can actually view and edit and, and make, makes it easier to select things that are especially being overlapped or don't have any height or are in a fixed or absolute position, things like that. It would be harder to kind of click on it when you're in the visual builder. This makes this so much easier. All right, so we need to create a new section. So I can do that one of two ways. I can do it here like normal, or I can actually click on this uh, blue, uh, I don't know if you can see that, let me zoom in. There's a blue plus icon next to my section in the layers view. And I can click on that, let me um, get out of here. And when I click on it, you'll notice that it pops up insert section over here in the visual part of the builder. So I can go ahead and add my regular section and that ensures it's in the middle there, which is what I want. I don't need a row for this. The only thing I'm gonna need is the actual section because the only thing I'm interested in for this section is the dividers. So this will have no height, no padding, nothing. We basically just want the divider styles to show up. But I do want to make sure again and take out the background so I'm gonna open up the section settings and again, give it a transparent background. And now I can start, you know, adding my divider styles. Um, actually before that, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out the height. So I'm gonna set my size and give it a height of zero. So, and then I wanna make sure and take out that default padding so now it should be flush and basically have no height and then after that let's go ahead and add our divider styles so i'm going to go to my dividers here and this is where i can add my top and bottom dividers let's start with the top one i'm going to add uh, this one here never never took the time to name these but I'm sure you have your own names for them. I am not going to give a name for them right now if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> um, I, th I think it's this one that I did, yes. So uh, this one here, and let's go ahead and do uh, a color here. Let's do this dark purple. And I wanna give this a height. So the divider height here, I'm gonna use a VW length unit, which makes it kind of scroll, uh, scale nicely when you adjust the width of the browser. Um, so it's kind of a, a tip there to use the BW length units for section dividers. If you want that section divider to look the same as the browser, like on tablet and phone and things like that. All right, so let's, all, let's also do a... Um, Point 0.6. So this is a little trick for section dividers. If you want to 
um, you can kind of bend the rules a bit and you don't have to repeat it by, you know, one, two, three times. You can actually do it by a little uh, a decimal uh, value there. So I'm doing 0.6 um, there. And that kind of makes it kind of wider, bigger, uh, whatever you call these hills. Um, so let's go ahead and add this one. Divider flip. Let's make it flip horizontal. And now let's go back up and add a bottom divider, which we want to, for this one, you can mix it up, but I'm, I'm going to match it with the same one. And let's give it the same color. Um, I'm using solid colors here. You might be tempted to use the transparent colors here, but you might find that it's difficult to get rid of, especially on different browsers, there's this little thin, annoying line <laughs> that shows up between these dividers. Um, I find it just easier. This is happens especially when you're doing what I'm doing here. You're stacking them on top of each other, um, which is not the normal use of a section divider. And sometimes you'll have a little thin line there if you're using a transparent background. If you know what I'm talking about, um, good. If not, don't don't be too concerned with it. But um, just in general, it's better to use a solid color here for this kind of thing. All right, so I'm gonna do a divider height to match. Let's do 20 VW. And let's do the divider horizontal repeat to point, let's see, point 0.5 this time. A Little bit different. And let's go ahead and adjust our divider flip both horizontally and vertically. And you can play around with those however you like. Um, I kind of like the way this design looks, so I'm going to stick with it. Now we're ready for scroll effects. So to do that, we're already in our section settings. Just go to the Advanced tab, go to Scroll Effects, and here's where we can have the fun moving this stuff around. Um, I do want to pause. We have a, a question from a couple of people here. Um, let's see. Sam Kelly. I am sure most people know this, but why use VH and VW instead of Pixel? Um, actually, real quick, all you can, all you need to do. This is a great question, and it's. I have a very uh, informative article on this, so just search for length units on our blog. I'll do it really quickly, and find this uh, post here. And, uh, a guide to understanding appliance, applying CSS length units, and it's going to basically cover everything you would need to know about the differences. But the short answer is um, VH and VW are relative to the browser width, and a pixel is an absolute, and it will a length unit, which means it will stay the same no matter how you resize the browser or the container that it's in. Hope that answered your question. That was a good one, though. Uh, Uncle Social says, uh, let's see. Uh, Jason is about to refer you to his blog post on elegant themes. <laughs> yes, but he's busy, so I'll do it for him. Thank you very much. You called it. All right. Good job. Um, whatever Uncle Social said, um, Isam, there you go. There is an echo. You've been, you've been uh, with us for far too long, Uncle Social. You're starting to read minds. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> All right, let's go and add our scroll transition effects. So what I want here is to move it from left to right to add some motion, but I also, so I'm going to add some horizontal motion. But if I do that, uh, just to show you here, I'm going to close my layers view for a moment. Um, and I, if you can see as I move up and down, you, you can see kind of the where it breaks off at the end, right? So we don't want that. So to compensate for that, we also want to add um, a scaling up. So we want to make it larger so that we won't see it on the right and the left. So that's kind of the main idea here is to scale it up, make it bigger, 
so that we can move it from left to right. The same concept goes for things like, um, uh, what's that called, the Ken Burns effect or the parallax effect. Uh, uses the same concept, uh, makes the background image bigger so you can move it around in the background. All right, so let's go ahead and add our horizontal uh, motion. Let's just keep the defaults for this one, but I do want to make or add some scaling up and down as well. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to do my, my um, let's see. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, I want to make it 200 to start. So let's go 200% um, viewport, excuse me, viewport bottom. Let me just make sure you can see what I'm talking about here. So on my set scaling up and down, let me move this over. Um, I, I'm going to set this viewport bottom uh, starting scale to 200%. And that's going to basically double the size of my section divider um, at the very start, at the very bottom of the, the viewport when I'm scrolling. So as soon as it becomes visible, it's going to be 200% 200 um, scaled up. So when it reaches 50%, um, actually, I'm going to break this up into two values so that it, it'll stay at a certain percentage in this little mid scale um, area here. So I'm going to set this to, let's do 150. So it's 150% and it's going to hold at 150% between 45% um, and 65% of the viewport. And then it's going to end, let's do 150. All right, so there you go. Scroll out here or zoom out. And so now when I go to the right and left or scroll up and down, you can see that the, the right and the left cutoff points are being hidden on the left and right side of the browser, which is what we want. All right, so on, uh, I do want to adjust this on tablet a bit uh, because it will um, show differently, like because getting back to the uh, question from Assam earlier uh, about the viewport, uh, excuse me, the length units, um, the, this here, the horizontal motion is actually using pixels uh, in the value. So the starting offset for my horizontal motion by default is four uh, at zero percent and then negative four at you know hundred percent of the viewport. So what that means is four is basically is equal to 400 pixels. And so when you get to tablet, because it's a fixed or an absolute length unit of pixels, when you move it over, 400 pixels on tablet, it's uh, it's not compensating for that smaller browser width, so it's going to move it um, at a greater distance um, because the other, you know, the divider is shrinking. So that's why we need to adjust it on tablet. So to do that, I'm going to give it on my horizontal, let's just make it three and my starting offset, make it three, and then my ending offset, let's do, let's see, what do I have? Negative three, I guess. So there you go. And that should do it almost. Let's just do um, negative two, I guess. We have to play with it just to make sure it's not moving too far. But you get the idea. And uh, let's adjust the scale as well on tablet. 
Um, let's do, we're going to make it bigger. So I'm going to start off at 400. So basically double the size on tablet. Maybe that's too large, but it's good for now. Um, and then let's do one, let's do 300 in the middle there. And then let's do 400 on the end. There you go. So on tablet, it looks pretty good. I'm going to save that out. All right. Let's check any questions. Uh, Assam, thanks. Is thanking you mostly, Uncle Social, for helping. <laughs> All right. Um, we have a question from Lahiru. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Any offer uh, in the works on the home? Uh, let's see. In coronavirus time, any offer to to who works in the home in Corona? I'm not sure what you're getting at. If it's an offer from Elegant Themes, like for our products, uh, maybe is what you're getting at. I'm not sure, but I know I it's not to my knowledge that we don't I don't think we're having a special offer for this, but um, good question. Uh, let's continue on. Uh, if you are just joining us, I do want to welcome you to this Divi use case live stream that we have this week. And we're showing you how you can add a section divider scroll effect. And that's what we're doing here basically adding scroll effects to section dividers. So uh, you can check out more info in the chat by clicking on the link to our blog post that goes along with this. So let's go ahead and get started. Or not get started, let's continue. Uh, we're basically done our first design. So we've added our um, section divider scroll effect to this one and it sits nicely behind our content. And now I basically want to show you how easy it is to create new styles. And you could probably already guess. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just to deploy the layers view again. And let's go into our section, our middle section that contains our section divider styles. Go back to our dividers. And we could change the divider styles on the top and bottom um, to something like this. And get a brand new design. See that one? Um, you can also, let's go ahead and save that. And let's check out what that looks like on the live site here. So there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and one thing you can also do because of this kind of layout is to duplicate the section and because it has no height to it, you can easily overlap section dividers on top of each other really easily and it creates opportunity for, you know, all, a whole lot more creative movement um, in the background. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, just getting back to the example here that we're going to do, as you can see, uh, this is actually three layers of, of sections with each with a different section divider color and a different section divider scroll effect. And, and so it's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is duplicate that middle section with our divider style. And Oh, actually, I'm going to I'm going to uh, actually delete that one. I'm going to go back first before I start duplicating and I want to get the divider style that I want. I'm going to change the divider style to this one here that you can't see because of my head. Here we go. So, that one and let's match it here. I like this one because it has some kind of transparency in the uh, top and bottom portion. 
which allows you to see the colors of the other ones behind it. So let's go ahead and save that out. And let's duplicate our section now. All right, so it'll look the same because it's actually directly on top of the previous section and it has all the exact same colors and scroll effects. So it's gonna look like nothing happened, but something has. So let's go ahead and click on the new section that we made and let's open the settings. Let's change up our divider color here. Uh, let's choose this bright green and let's do the same for the bottom. Bottom is the top um, in this design. There you go. And it's still directly overlapping because we need to adjust the scroll effects to kind of offset the design. So let's go ahead and go to advanced tab. Let's go to our scroll effects. And then for the horizontal motion scroll effect, um, let's go ahead and do start our scroll offset at six. So basically we're just kind of adjusting these values to kind of offset the movement. And let's end it at negative three. All right. So I like how you can actually see the results as you do this when you scroll up and down in the visual builder. So you can see it's starting to create that kind of blending and overlapping effect. And then on tablet, let's go ahead and adjust it to three starting offset and let's do negative three, which is, I believe the default, but yeah. So negative three ending offset. All right, looking good. Let's go back to desktop and let's go to our, uh, let's save this one actually, and let's duplicate it. This entire section that we just uh, created with our new section style or divider style. And let's open up our third layer, our third section, if you will. And let's change our color just like we did before with the last one. This time, let's make it a lighter purple. And let's do the same for the top and bottom divider. All right. And let's update our scroll effect. Let's first do the horizontal motion on desktop, which is needs to be set to three starting offset. And the ending offset is negative two. See what that does by scrolling up and down here. Good. Uh, let's see, let's just keep it like that for now and let's save it out. And you'll notice that this lighter purple is on the front. If you want to change the order of what, what section is on top of the other, you can actually um, move the sections here. The, the one in the bottom is going to take precedence and it's going to be stacked on top of the one before it. Or you can open up the settings, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up my first section divider settings and go to my advanced tab, go to my position settings, scroll down and adjust the Z index for my section. And I'm gonna up it one. And so now that section is gonna sit on top of my other ones. And let's go ahead and save it out. And let's check out the live version. All right, and so you have a a nice, unique, colorful motion effect for your section dividers. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Um, 
So some another question here. Uh, I missed how these stack without being placed above or below the other dividers. So good question. Um, they are, let's just do a quick look at the wireframe view, just to kind of show you the setup here. So our first section was a content block, basically, that holds our, our header. And that's this one here. And then um, the bottom section is what holds our text body, our little text block here. So these are two sections. That, um, and in the middle are our section dividers. These are all sections that have been given a height of zero pixels. So that's why they're stacking on top of each other. They have no height whatsoever. Uh, but you're still able to see the section dividers um, because they are overflowing outside of the section container, if you will. So they are stacked on top of each other with, without any spacing whatsoever, like padding, and they have no height. So that's how they're stacked. And then we just add those section divider styles to each one of them, and then they overlap nicely. So hope that answers your question. All right, um, let's go ahead and see what it looks like on mobile. Hopefully I didn't miss any uh, steps along the way. Um, let me just, so, all right, so here it is on phone. Um, I think what's happening here is my header is jumping on two lines. Um, so, I didn't expect that. That's pushing this block down a little bit farther, but this is how it would look on a phone. Um, and let's do a tablet here. So you can see the section divider styles adjust nicely. And you can tweak those values however you like. Wow, okay. So let's go ahead and see if we have any more questions before we wrap up for today. Thanks for all of your questions. Um, okay, we got one from Uncle Social. Can you fix the two-line mobile header for my sanity? Is that just a font size setting? Um, I think think I know what you're talking about, but I'm not quite sure. Sorry, I can't answer that right now, but um, hopefully it's it sounds like it's a common issue or but if, if, if there's someone here that can address that, that would be helpful. Let me check Facebook over here. Um, all right, so we have one from uh, Domenico. Uh, how can you adjust the Z index of the dividers? Um, I did answer that, but if you missed it, just real quickly, just go to the section that you want to. Oh, looky here. So um, if you run into this issue, see it doesn't look the same. For some reason, uh, just go into the settings here and update the, this might be a little bug if that we need to get ironed out, but the divider horizontal repeat here, just adjust it back to what it's supposed to be. Um, sometimes it kind of resets on you. I'm not sure why. Um, I figured that out while I was building this, but um, once what you can do to get back to your question is to click on the section that you want uh, that's holding your divider style and then go to advanced position and then adjust the Z index for the entire section. Uh, as you can see, this one's set to one. By default, they will all be set to zero. And so basically you just give the higher Z index to the one you want to sit on top. Good question.
another question from Uncle Social. In the mobile preview, you just gave us the moving section dividers wrapped onto two lines. That was all. Yes, exactly. That was the reason why it had the uh, the issue. I think uh, I gave it uh, too much of a uh, too many too too big of a size on on phone. All right, guys. All right, I think I'm just going to wrap it up here. Um, uh, thank you, guys. Uh, that's all I got for you this week. Um, be sure to subscribe to our blog newsletter, our YouTube channel, and like us on Facebook. That way you don't miss out on any future freebies or use case live streams we're going to be doing. Uh, our next one will be done this Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's the weekly WP Roundup, so we look forward to that. Hopefully you'll join us. Also, next week, uh, we'll be back here with another Divi use case live stream, and we do those on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. All right, uh, you can also check our uh, video description for more info on this live stream, and also there's a link in there where you can actually can help contribute your own content to our Divi or our Elegant Themes blog, so learn more about that. Uh, thanks again for watching. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye-bye.